Okay, students, uh, let's just start day two crash. We, okay, now we are starting from diversification. If an entity uh, di is diversifying, means making investment in a known core activity in a different business, in a different industry, then how do we calculate risk adjusted back? Step one is, to find beta asset of new industry. Now the question is, uh, how do we calculate beta asset of the new industry? And why do we calculate beta asset of the new industry? Number one, actually beta asset measures only business risk. Beta asset is a measure of only business risk. So how will you find out the beta asset of the new industry? It's, there's only one way, that is, Examiner is going to give you the proxy company which already operates in that industry where you are diversifying. All you need is just take equity beta of the proxy company, means your, com your competitor in the new industry. Take equity beta of that company and convert that into beta asset. So simply what are we going to do? We'll take proxy company beta equity, you will de-gear this. De-gear means ungear to get beta asset. How do we de-gear equity beta to get beta asset? A very simple, I would say, formula. Beta asset is equal to beta equity into market value equity. Market value equity plus market value of debt one minus tax rate. If you go towards a complete formula, then there's a beta debt as well. Market value of debt one minus tax rate, market value of debt one minus tax rate, and then we have market value of equity. But normally either it is FM or even it is AFM. Normally we assume beta debt is zero. So I would then you will have the formula like this. Beta asset is equal to beta equity. V upon market value of equity divided by market value of equity plus market value of debt one minus tax rate. Now listen carefully. You will use equity beta of the proxy company. Market value of equity of the proxy company, market value of debt of the proxy company, and you will calculate beta asset. That is step one, to find beta asset of the new industry. Okay. Let's say you have calculated asset beta of the new industry. Now step two. Gear up. Beta asset. With own financial gearing. In step two, what are we going to do? We will take the beta asset of the new industry, gear up with own financial gearing. You will get equity beta. Once you have calculated equity beta, then by using capital asset pricing model, you can calculate KE. Now, a very important point is how to gear up beta asset. And in other words, how to incorporate financial gearing impact to the beta asset because beta asset, another name for the beta asset is ungeared beta. The beta which does not have the financial risk. So how to gear up beta asset? Now, please look at this formula. Now I need beta equity. The formula changes a little bit is equal to beta asset into market value equity plus market value of debt one minus T upon V, please. Obviously this entire thing can be, can easily be written in an Excel cell. So when you need to convert beta acid into beta equity formula changes a little bit, beta equity will be equal to beta acid into market value of equity plus market value of debt one minus tax rate divided by V and look at the above one. When you need to convert beta equity into beta asset, then this is the formula. 
So you should be having a really good grip uh, when you are converting beta asset to the beta equity and beta asset to the beta equity. Another point, never forget one thing. That is beta equity. Logically, beta equity will be more than beta asset. Why? Because logically, equity beta is a two risk beta. And this is one risk beta. So logically, two risk beta obviously is going to be higher than one risk beta. Repeat, beta equity is a two risk beta. Beta asset is a one risk beta. So logically, two risk beta will be higher than one risk beta. Okay, let's say, please look at the data properly and I want everyone to solve this question quickly. Let's say we have APLC. Market value of equity. is 200 million. Market value of debt. Is 80 million. ABLC is diversifying to the new industry. Okay. BBLC already operates in that industry. Okay. BBLC will work as a proxy company, BBLC. Market value of equity. is 220 million. BBLC market value equity is 220 million. Market value of debt is let's say 121 million. Equity beta of BPLC is 1.7. Other information tax rate is 30 percent. KD of APLC is 6%. RF is 4%. Equity risk premium is 3%. Required VAC for APLC. Let me just zoom out so that you can see the data. Everyone can see that. I hope everyone can see the data. Please, I want everyone to attempt this question quickly and give me the result. You have five minutes to solve this. I think now let's solve together because three students, they have given three different answers. That's little bit surprising because exams are not just near, I would say very near. So you should be able to tackle such questions. Okay, now, APLC diversifying. So step one is to find beta asset of the new industry. All you need is just take equity beta gearing of the proxy company. We have 1.7. Simply to find beta asset of 
न्यू इंडस्ट्री सिंपली टू डी गेयर इक्विटी बीटा वन पॉइंट सेवन ऑफ प्रॉक्सी कंपनी बीपीएल से सो बीटा एसिड इज इक्वल टू बीटा इक्विटी मार्केट वैल्यू इक्विटी मार्केट वैल्यू ऑफ इक्विटी प्लस मार्केट वैल्यू ऑफ डेट बीपीएलसी मार्केट वैल्यू इक्विटी इज टू ट्वेंटी डेट इज वन ट्वेंटी वन टैक्स रेट इज थर्टी परसेंट सो वन माइनस टी इट विल बी जीरो पॉइंट सेवन लेट सी वट आर वी गेटिंग वन ट्वेंटी वन इंटू पॉइंट सेवन प्लस टू ट्वेंटी टू ट्वेंटी वन पॉइंट टू टू सेवन सो वन ट्वेंटी वन अगेन लेट मी री चेक सो दैट दे शुडेंट बी एनी अर्थमेटिकल एर it is correct now next step is we have to gear up this beta acid with our own financial gearing to gear up beta acid 1.227 with the financial gearing of aplc financial gearing of now we need beta equity is equal to beta asset into market value of equity of aplc 220 Two twenty is VPLC. APLC is two hundred. Market value equity is two hundred. Debt is eighty. Into zero point seven. Why zero point seven? Because the tax rate is thirty percent. Divided by two hundred. Let's see what are we getting. Students, I am getting one point five seven. I am getting one point five seven. Please check. I'll ask the admin to share this uh, PDF on your WhatsApp groups. Equity beta I am getting is one point five seven. So K is equal to R F. R F is four percent. Equity risk premium. Equity risk premium is the difference of R M minus R F, which is three percent, into one point five seven. Eight point seven one percent. That is K. Very easily we can calculate KD one minus T. KD they have given us six percent. One minus T means into zero point seven. I am getting four point two percent. Logically, the VAG will be a risk-adjusted VAG because of the diversification. Because in case of diversification, we calculate risk-adjusted VAG. 
or you can say a project specific back. 8.71% into market value equity is 200 divided by 280 plus KD1 minus C which is 4.2% market value debt upon 280. Let's see what is the percentage of risk adjusted back. 8.71 into 200 plus 4.2 into 80 or whatever comes divided by 280 7.42% please just want to check yes or no 8.71 into 200 plus 4.2 into 80 So the risk adjusted back is 7.42%. Okay. Now let me just save this PDF and then we are going to start a question of investment appraisal. Okay, students, just try to read this question once, then we are solving it together. Just... Read it once. Just try to read it once and let me bring the green tea. Okay. It's, this is a green tea time, not a tea time. Okay, uh, what are they asking? They're asking calculate NPV of the investment in nominal terms. Nominal terms means with inflation. Nominal terms means with inflation. Comment on its financial acceptability. Commenting on financial acceptabilities, I would say straightforward. If NPV is positive, then obviously project is acceptable. If NPV is negative, then obviously we will reject the project. Discuss how the capital asset pricing model can assist he back in making a better investment decision with respect of its what what they say? New product launch, new product launch. If they are launching a new product, doing something different. Then how this capital asset pricing model helps can help this company? I think when we started this uh, class, day two, we have discussed the concept of risk adjusted back. When you are going to make investment in a new industry, when you are going to do something different, making investment in a non-core activity, how this capital asset pricing model helps you can I say step one, what do we do? We try to calculate beta asset of the new industry. How do we calculate beta asset of the new industry? By using equity beta and financial gearing of the proxy company, we de-gear equity beta of the proxy company to get beta asset. After that, whatever the beta asset comes, that beta asset will be geared up with our own financial gearing. So simply we convert that beta asset into beta equity. And once you have calculated equity beta like this, then we'll be using that equity beta into capital asset pricing model to calculate what? K. So simply in this question, especially in part B, all you need is just try to explain the approach of calculating risk adjusted back. Yes, you just need to explain how do we calculate risk adjusted back. So if you can explain how do we calculate risk adjusted back, you can very easily get, very easily get I would say around six to seven marks. Even not six, at least they will give you very easily five marks. 
how to explain risk adjusted back steps for that you just rewatch today's lecture you will automatically get to know because when we started the class i think i we have number one solve a question and before even solving a question i did discuss these steps step one and step two now let's go towards part a And one more thing, always remember one point, do not please, do not get demotivated uh, by reading, by looking at the answer of the examiner. Obviously, whenever an examiner is going to write, the volume is going to be, the volume will be far more than what we are expecting from students while sitting in examination hall. Nobody can produce the same volume. Even the examiner cannot produce the same volume while sitting in exam. So then the question comes in a student mind, why do they write so much? Because they actually want to teach you. That is why they explain so much in the answer. Okay, now come here. Heback is preparing to launch a new product in a new market, which is outside its current business operation. If you just read these two lines, they're talking about diversification so obviously in diversification capm is going to help you the company is undertaking market research and test marketing at a cost of 500000 obviously sunk cost past cost irrelevant Either you are going to make investment or not, this 500,000 cost will not be reverted back. As a result of which it expects the new product to be successful. Hebeck company plans to charge a lower selling price initially and then increase the selling price on the assumption that new product will establish itself in the new market. Forecast sales, volume, selling price, and variable cost are as follows. Sales volume, they have given us 200. I'm ignoring three zeros. 800, 900, and then we have 400. Okay. Selling price, they have given us variable cost. Okay. Selling price and variable cost are given in the current price terms. Whenever examiner uses the word current price terms, it means inflation will be incorporated from the first year. If examiner uses the word current air price, present day price, or year zero price, or real term price, it means inflation will be incorporated. Examiner can use number of words one is the current price term, second is the real term price, third year zero price, present day price. And in fact, sometimes examiner says above values are before incorporating the inflation. All of these five things means inflation will be incorporated from the first year. And whenever examiner says first year price, if question says first year price, then inflation will be incorporated from the second year. Why? Because first year price means inflation of the first year is already incorporated. So selling price variable costs are given in the current price. So inflation will be incorporated from the first year. Taking before taking account of, and there's a hint as well, before taking account of forecast selling price inflation 4%. Per year, variable cost inflation is 5% per year. Incremental fixed cost is always relevant because it is because of the project. Incremental additional fixed cost is relevant. 500,000 per year in the current price. It means again inflation will be incorporated from the first year and would ar ar arise as a result of producing the new product. Fixed cost inflation is 8% per year is expected. The initial investment cost of production equipment for the new product will be 2.5 billion. This is your initial investment. Table at the start of the first year of the operation. Production will cease at the end of four years. 
because the new product is expected to have become obsolete due to the new technology. The production equipment would have a scrap value at the end of year four, one lakh twenty five thousand in the future value terms. So your scrap value, residual value is one twenty five. Investment in working capital is one point five million. Will be required at the start of the first year of operation. Working capital inflation of six percent per year is expected, and working capital will be recovered in full at the end of four years. So number one, initially we will invest in working capital one point five million, and subsequently there will be a additional or you can say incremental working capital as well. Because the working capital requirement will increase with the inflation rate, and at the end of the project, we know that entire working capital, whatever you have invested, it will be recovered. Another point, never forget one more point: always deal with working capital after you have calculated the tax payments. Why? Because working the nature of the working capital is current assets, and obviously, current assets they have nothing to do with your taxation. So it is recommendable always deal with working capital after you have calculated the taxation, and always write the residual value after the tax payment. Do not write the residual value before the tax payment. Do not deal with working capital before the tax payment. Hibe company pays corporation tax twenty percent per year, with the tax liability being settled in the year in which it arises. Same year, they are paying the tax in the same year. The company can claim tax allowable depreciation on a twenty-five percent reducing balance basis on initial investment cost adjusted in the final year of operations for a balancing allowance or charge. Simply in the last year, we'll take balancing figure, and that balancing figure will automatically have the impact of gain or loss. Logically, the balancing allowance is a technical term which we use in taxation. Balancing allowance means instead of loss on disposal, we use the word balancing allowance, and balancing charge means gain on disposal. In taxation, instead of gain on disposal, we use the word balancing charge. Ah, uh, but don't worry at all. The way we are going to solve it, we normally take the balancing figure in the last year, and that balancing figure will automatically have each and will have each and every impact. The bank company currently has a nominal after tax. Weighted average cost of capital twelve percent. So obviously, we are required to calculate NPV in nominal terms. So we will use cost of capital, which is in nominal terms. Number one, number two. Please listen carefully. Your cost of capital will always be after tax. Why? Because we are here to calculate NPV, and since your net cash flows, they will be after tax. So logically, the cost of capital will also be after tax. The real cost of capital is irrelevant. The company uses its current VAC as the discount rate for all investment projects. Logically, 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 you should not be using your current VAC for all the investment projects, especially uh, when you are making investment in a new industry, in a different industry. You are doing something different, which is diversification. Normally, in case of diversification, companies they should not use current VAC. Why? Because in case of diversification, what happens? Your business risk will change. Example: Let's say your company is a, is already operating in a cement industry. If your company is already operating in a cement industry, and now your 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 new project is in is in uh, is in automobile industry. So obviously, the business risk of automobile industry is going to be totally different than the cement sector. So it makes no sense that you are using the current VAC. Current VAC actually incorporates your current business risk. When you diversify, so obviously in a new industry, your business risk would be different. So logically, you should not be using your current VAC for all the investment. Yeah, it is happening in our country in a lucky cement. Okay, now. Let's go for the workings. Working one simply calculate sales.
T1, T2, T3, and T4. Units 200, 800, 900, and 400. 2894. 2894. Two eight nine four. Selling price per unit they have given us fifteen eighteen twenty two twenty two fifteen eighteen twenty two twenty two. Now simply take the inflation. Selling price inflation. Selling price inflation is 4%. Simply 1.04. 1.04 is square. Obviously, when we are going to solve the same question on Excel on a spreadsheet, you are going to save your time, no doubt about it. But right now I'm explaining each and everything. And that is my experience that uh, when we are solving the same question on one note, it is more understandable for the students. They can see each and every step. Otherwise, everyone knows that now you have to solve on a spreadsheet. Let me use the calculator. 200 into 15 into 1.04. And NPV shortcut is available in exam. Okay. And all the shortcuts which are available in exam, you are supposed to use them. 3120. 800 into 18 into 1.04. And then we have a square. 15,575. Okay, 900 into 22, 1.04, and then we have power 3. Triple 2, 7, 2. 400 into 22, 1.04 power 4. Uh, 10,295. It's 10,295. Now let's go for working to variable cost. T1, T2, T3, and T4. Two, eight, nine, nine, four. Two, eight, nine, and four. Variable cost per unit. Great, it is nine. Inflation per annum. Let's see the variable cost inflation. Variable cost inflation. It is 5%. Variable cost inflation is 5%. Later. <clears throat> Uh, 200 multiplied by 9 into 1.05. 
एटीन नाइनटी एट हंड्रेड इंटू नाइन इंटू वन पॉइंट जीरो फाइव हंड्रेड स्क्वायर सेवन नाइन थ्री एट नाइन हंड्रेड इंटू नाइन इंटू वन पॉइंट जीरो फाइव एंड देन पावर थ्री नाइन थाउजेंड थ्री हंड्रेड एंड सेवेंटी सेवन ओके फोर हंड्रेड इंटू नाइन इंटू वन पॉइंट जीरो फोर पावर इज टेट्रा फोर थाउजेंड सेवेंटी थ्री सेवेंटी सिक्स Fixed cost we can directly deal with no issue at all. And now let's go for tax allowable depreciation. Working three. Tax savings from capital allowances. T1, T2, T3, T4. Tax depreciation. Tax depreciation or capital. Another name for the tax depreciation is capital allowances. Okay. Tax allowable depreciation is twenty five percent reducing balance method. An initial investment. Initial investment they have given us two point five million. We are we have ignored three zero, so it will become twenty five hundred. Okay. You can take this. Two thousand five hundred and then into twenty five percent. I am getting six twenty five. For the next year, you can directly take seventy five percent of this. Seventy five percent of six twenty five will give you tax appreciation for the second year which i am getting 468.75 so make it 469 469 into 75% 352 no simply in the last year we have to just take the balancing figure Why do we take the balancing figure in the last year? Because according to I S sixteen, because according to I S sixteen, only depreciable cost should be depreciated over the useful life of the asset, and depreciable cost. What is the logic behind calculation of non? Where it is written, it is a non-depreciable thing. Where it is written, it is non-depreciable. Nobody who depreciates the non-depreciable things. Seventy-five percent is non-depreciable. Where it is written, reducing balance method. Students, how do you calculate? Tax depreciation and a reducing balance method. Keep watching. Twenty five hundred minus the depreciation of the first year. Let's see what is the net book value. Net book value is eighteen seventy five. Now take twenty five percent of this. I'm getting four sixty nine. Look at this four sixty nine and four sixty nine. It's the same thing. Yes or no? Just a shortcut of getting the same thing. Otherwise, under reducing balance method, what do we do? We calculate, we apply percentage on net book value. 
just a shortcut of the same thing. Okay, now. In the last day, actually, we'll take the balancing figure. According to IE 16, only depreciable cost should be depreciated. Your initial investment is 2,500 minus the residual value. Examiner has given us the residual value as well. Let us check. Depreciable cost is the difference of cost minus scrap value. Scrap value is 125. So according to IE 16, only depreciable cost should be depreciated over the useful life of the asset. So depreciable cost is 2375. With, the, with complete honesty, you should write balancing figure. So from this 2375, just deduct above three tax depreciations. So 2375 minus 625 minus uh, 469 minus 352. I'm getting a balancing figure 929. Okay. We are paying tax in the same year. So tax depreciation multiplied by tax aid will give us tax saving. Let's see the taxation rate. Taxation rate is 20%. So 625 into 20, I'm getting 125. 469 into 20, make it 94. 352 into 20, 70. 929 into 20, uh, make it 186. Tax savings. Okay, now one more working. We have to show the working of incremental working capital as well. Working for that is working capital. T0, T1, T2, T3, and T4. Let us first show the cumulative working capital. Let's see initially, what is the amount of working capital? Initially, we need 1.5 million. Then it will increase by 6% every year. Initially, we need 1500. Then there is an inflation of 6% per annum. So 1500 multiplied by 1.06. 1500 multiplied by 1.06 gives you 1590. 1590 multiplied by 1.06. I'm getting 1685. Then into 1.06. I'm getting 1787. Okay, now. Working capital and recovery, which actually you are going to show in your calculation. Initially, actually, we need 1500. Then what is the difference? Between 1500 and 1590, it is 90. Then 1590, 1685. One six eight five minus one five nine zero. I'm getting ninety five. One seven eight seven minus one six eight five. One zero two. 
So all the PDFs of crash course admin is going to share in the respective WhatsApp groups. Don't worry at all. And since we know that working capital can never be consumed. So whatever we have invested in the working capital at the end of the project, it will be recovered, which is one seven eight seven. Now very easily we can calculate actually NPV. T0, T1, T2, T3, T4. Initial investment. Two thousand five hundred sales, which is working one P one two zero Then we have fifteen thousand seventy five triple two seven two. Fifteen thousand five seventy five and triple two seven two. Then we have ten thousand two ninety five. Variable cost, which is working to variable cost, variable cost, uh, one eight nine zero. Seven nine three eight. Nine three double seven then we have four three seven six now let's go for incremental fixed cost. Incremental fixed cost. Incremental fixed cost is 500,000 and it will increase by 8% per year. Now let's see. So simply 500 <clears throat> multiplied by 1.08, I'm getting 540. Then 540 multiplied by 1.08, 583.2. So leave that point, 583. Then multiply by 1.08, 630. With a slight rounding off, I get this value. Then we are getting 680. Okay. This will give us a taxable profit. Three thousand one twenty minus one eight nine zero minus five forty. I'm getting six ninety. The first value is six ninety. 
Let's see what is the second value. 15,572 oh, oh, 15, minus 7938 minus 553. I'm getting 7051. Triple two seven two minus nine three seven seven minus six thirty. I'm getting twelve thousand two hundred and sixty five. Twelve thousand two hundred and sixty five. Okay. Then ten thousand two ninety five minus four three seven six minus six eighty. I'm getting five thousand two hundred and thirty nine. Tax rate is twenty percent. Six ninety and then twenty percent one thirty eight. Seven thousand fifty one and twenty percent fourteen ten. Twelve thousand two hundred and sixty five and then twenty percent. Two thousand four hundred and fifty three. Five thousand two hundred and thirty nine into twenty percent. Uh, 1,048. Now, let's go for tax saving from capital ounces. Tax savings from capital allowances. Working three. One twenty five ninety four seventy. One twenty five ninety four seventy. And finally, one eighty six. The scrap value is one twenty five. Working capital and recovery that is working for I think it was fifteen hundred times zero. And then nineteen ninety five. One zero two. And working capital can never be consumed, so 1787 is the recovery. Let's get net cash flows. Time zero is 4000 negative T1. 690 minus 138 plus 125 minus 90. 587. 7051 minus 1410 uh, plus 94. Minus 95. 5,640. 12,265 minus I'm getting 9,780. 
5,239 uh, minus 1048 plus 186 plus 125. plus 1787 i'm getting 6289 cost of capital let's see what is the cost of capital cost of capital is 12% Obviously, we'll be using the shortcut of NPV. Uh, the, there's a question from the student that he's asking, is it possible to have two scrap values in the same project? I have a qu counter question. Have you seen this in any of the past papers, please? Can you mention the year and the past paper? If you have seen this in any past paper, please quickly reply. Can you mention this? Any past paper in which you have seen this? We are waiting. Okay. Please mention the past paper and the year where you have seen this. Please. Now, next question is, have you studied IA 16 property plan and equipment? Is there anyone who has seen an IE16 where IE16 says that you will have two scrap values? Please, there's no such thing even in IE16. Okay, <laughs> so please refer to your IE16 as well, but not now, now focus on your exam. Cost of capital is 12%, but let's calculate NPV by using the shortcut of NPV. Let me go towards Axel just to show you the shortcut of NPV. But we need these values. So please try to memorize some of them so that it will help me to. <laughs> okay, I can do one thing. Let me take the picture of these values so I can use in the Excel. Great. I hope that everyone can see this Excel sheet. I just want to show you the shortcut. Time zero, one, two, three, four. Uh, net cash flows. Time zero, it is negative 4,000. Then we have 587. Then we have uh, 5,640. Please correct me if there's any issue. Then we have 9,780. Then we have 6,289. Cost of capital is 12%. Now simply calculate NPV. Let's take the rate. All the values from T1. Bracket close. Plus this. Ignore the percentage sign. Just numbers. 
students i'm getting this npv 11978 can you please check yes or no we are getting 11978 NPV is positive, so obviously project is financially acceptable. But the final answer of NPV is 11,978. Let us go back to one note and we can solve it manually as well. I just wanted to show you the shortcut of NPV, which is available in exam and you are supposed to use that as well. Otherwise, manually we know that 12% means 1. 0.893.797712636. So obviously negative 4000. 557 into 0 0.893. Uh, 524. 5640 into 0.797. 9780 into 0 0.7126932 make it 4000 so 5244 I'm getting 11984 on Excel we got 11,978. So, little bit uh, difference should not disturb you. When you'll be solving the same question by using calculator and by using Excel, there will be a little bit difference, which should not disturb you. So, you can see the answer 11,982. And on Excel, when we did, it was 11,978. Uh, if I show you again, Look at this, 11,978, 11,982 is the same thing, no issue at all. So students, uh, that is all for today's class. What is the agenda for the tomorrow class? Let me tell you. Uh, in the tomorrow class, uh, tomorrow we'll be discussing, uh, obviously, IRR, payback period, ARR, sensitivity analysis. So this is the agenda for tomorrow. And same timings. Timings will be same. No issue at all. Timings is going to be same. So see you all tomorrow, inshallah. Thank you very much. Have a nice life.